let us take a look at exponential and logarithmic functions. Now, before looking at this section, you need to be familiar with an inverse function. So let's start with an exponential function. Exponential function is defined as f of x equal to a to the power x. My values of a must be positive but not equal to 1, because if a is equal to 1, I just have the constant function. But my exponent x is any real number. That's the exponential function with base a. And it takes on two basic shapes. In the case where a is greater than 1, it's got the shape where it's increasing towards a positive x-axis, and the shape when a is between 0 and 1, it decreases towards the positive x-axis. So that is my exponential function. So if we just had to look at one very special one, a reminder of the number e, that's how e is defined, the Euler number. Hopefully you're familiar with the Euler number. If I look at y equal to e to the power x, that's also an exponential function. It has the shape that looks like this. Always cutting at 1 if it's in this format. So that's e to the power x. Now, if I had to sketch e to the power x and 2 to the power x on the same axis, now e is a little bit more than 2, which means it's going to climb faster, which means 2 to the power x is going to increase slower, and it will be over there. So that's e to the power x, and that's 2 to the power x. So if we just compare them on the same axes. All right, now if I look at a quarter to the power x and I want to sketch it, it generally has the shape where that value is 1. Now, if I change the subject of the formula, so if that's my function f, if I look at the inverse function and I say, well, then x is equal to a quarter to the power y. How do I make y the subject of the formula? And that, hopefully you know, we use logarithms. Because what a logarithm means, if I've got log base 10 of 100 is equal to 2, this number on this side, this 2, is just the exponent. So what this statement means is 10, this is the base, to the power 2 is equal to 100. So converting between exponents and logarithms, always just remember, with a logarithm, the number on the side is always the exponent. So here, the exponent y is equal to log base a quarter of x. So now I've looked at the inverse function of the exponential function, and that is a logarithmic function. So what shape will it take? Remember, the inverse function is symmetrical around the line y equal to x, which means this inverse function is going to take this shape, where it cuts now at the x-axis equal to 1. All right, let's look at 3 to the power x. 3 to the power x is going in this direction. So the inverse function should look like this. What is the inverse function going to be? The inverse function is going to be x equal to 3 to the power y. So the exponent y is equal to log the basis 3 of x. And that's what the graph looks like. So logarithmic functions are closely linked to exponential functions. And you must be able to go from one to the other. Just take note, when I found the inverse, I could see that this was a one-to-one -one function. So indeed, I could find the inverse. So when we define a logarithmic function, there's again two options. Log base a of x, if my value of a is between 0 and 1, it takes this one shape. And if a values are bigger than 1, it takes another shape. So just take note, a very special one. If I've got y equal to e to the power x, if that's my function f, it's 1 to 1. f inverse is then going to be x equal to e to the power y. So y is equal to log base e of x. Now, log base e we know is lin. So e to the power x and lin x are inverses of each other. And e is greater than 1, so e to the power x would look like that, while lin x would take this shape. All right, so they're closely linked, logarithmic and exponential functions. They're all one-to-one, -one, and you've now seen how to sketch them and how they are defined.